Back on the Sportsmax Zone, we're turning our attention now to cricket. The Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board's elections are set to be contested on Saturday at the Sir Frank War Development Centre in Kufa. Incumbent President Asim Basarat will be looking for a fifth consecutive term in office. He will have to fend off the challenge from Surjdat Mahbir, a former off-spinner for TNT and outgoing president of the Secondary Schools Cricket League. Mahabir is also the current TTCB secretary. Under the new constitution that was recently accepted by the board, the new president will serve a four-year term instead of three. In a statement issued after his nomination two Fridays ago, Mahabir had this to say. After 12 years of unfinished business, it is time for new leadership and a new business plan if TNT and West Indies cricket are to once more rise to the top. This type of status quo cannot be maintained. Our valuable resources and finances must be channeled and managed efficiently and effectively into the right areas for growth, development and success of our players, clubs and national teams. Mahabir now joins us on the Sportsmax Zone to talk about his uh, bid to unseat Basarat as president. Um, Suraj Dat, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Great having you on for the first time. And this is a, a tough job facing you, isn't it? A pleasant good afternoon. Good evening, Lance, and good evening to all of viewers. Yes, it's a tough job. We have had um, Mr. Basarat has been successfully defending his to, um, title of president of the cricket board for a number of years. And, but we believe that there is a need for change. We believe there's a time for change, as you just read in that, state, that media statement. And somebody has to do the job, and I have accepted the task of endeavoring to do that job of changing the face of Trinidad and Tobago cricket. Yeah, you, you mentioned in the past couple of weeks that uh, even though you have accepted, uh, Suresh Dad, that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has hamstrung uh, all sporting administrators, you still believe that more could have been done during this period? Of course, even though the COVID was there, there were, we could still have had some development. We could have had a greater amount of planning, moving into recovery post-COVID, and put ourselves in a position to take off whenever that happens, whenever we are free to go back out. In addition to that, I believe that even pre-COVID, and this is my major concern, not enough was being done for the growth and development of the sport through uh, youth development, club development, and generally, providing the impetus for a better national team and better players moving on to the West Indies level. Yeah. Um, always curious, though, Suresh, that for, for onlookers, when someone within uh, the, the current administration, TTCB, you're currently the secretary there, um, gives the narrative that not, not enough is, is being done. So there, there could be some suspicion, you know, from viewers looking on that, you know, you have, you have been part of the, the, the executive so um, why, why challenge the leader in the way that you are at the moment? Because I came into an organization having been very successful at the, as president of the Secondary Schools Cricket League, and I had a vision of what I would like to see moving on. Mr. Barasad has contributed a lot to Trinidad and Tobago Cricket, but being in the administration, I did not feel that we were being given the opportunity as executive members to really give out as much as we could have and I don't think that we were really engaged to the best of our ability to give as much as we could to really advance the state of the cricket. And as I said, even, even post pre-COVID, I got in because I felt there was a need for change. And I don't feel that the vision is there. I don't feel that the direction is there as we like to see from a leader. And I believe that to take things in a particular direction, you must have a vision, you must have drive. And I'm not seeing that that exists at the present time with Mr. Bashir. I think there's a need for change. He has become a little stale on the job after 12 years. And we need to move forward with a new vision, new drive, new efforts, a renewed executive led by someone who is willing to go the extra mile. Uh, Mr. Mahavir, Chris here, you, you, you mentioned where you thought that you know, the TTCB have fallen short over, over recent time. Where exactly do you think that Trinidad is lacking, Trinidad and Tobago is lacking in terms of their cricket? Where would you like to see enhanced? I mean, the first it, step mm -hmm. is um, youth development. I don't think we have enough children under 18 involved in, in cricket in Trinidad and Tobago, if you look at our manifesto, one of our big plans is Project 10,000, where we intend to reach out throughout Trinidad and Tobago as much as possible in every area to unearth new talent, to find new children, to get children playing again, to get these numbers up. And when we get these numbers up, then we can have more 
young cricketers, more young, we will develop new talent and then we can guide that talent forward to take us better than better national teams at all levels, 13, 15, 17, 19, and the senior Red Force team. And if you look at West Indies cricket now, we need in Trinidad and Tobago to be producing cricketers to bridge that gap from Trinidad and Tobago onto CWI teams. Yeah, uh, so that I, I hear you mentioning about the youth program and so on, but Basarat was was only recently talking about um, TNT putting 16 players into the uh, under-19 Rising Star camp that they had recently for Cricket West Indies, suggesting that um, the youth program in TNT is pretty strong at the moment. But if I'm listening to you now, it, y your narrative is suggesting that you think that a, a lot more could be done. Of course, we, we do have that number of players, and, and, and that's very good. And it also shows that that if you look closely, and I can show that nine of those players actually went on tours with secondary with secondary school youth teams from the age of 14. So the secondary youth team, sorry, secondary school cricket league has played a greater role in the development of those players. In addition, their clubs and so on have played role. But we don't have the, the the amount of children playing that we can really produce more. We don't have the the um, the extra assistance like high performance centers, elite coaching centers, specialist coaches that can help to bridge that gap and produce the cricketers that when they get to that level, they'll actually make it into the West Indies team, whether it's the other 19 or the national team. And that's where we need some extra work as well. Yeah, Mr. Mahabir, I, I mean, being involved in the cricket myself, as, it, as, as Lance would have said, in the under-15 and under-19 under tournaments, Trinidad have generally produced a lot. Trinidad and Tobago have produced a lot of cricketers, have done well, even up to recent, as Lance would have said. However, the, the senior team, for example, the four-day team, hasn't won in, what, maybe over a decade. Where do you think, where in that area is Trinidad and Tobago's cricket board falling short in terms of merging that gap? Because we used to have an under-21 competition, we used to have a national under 23 team. All those have gone by the wayside. Last year, we did plan an under 23 for four team tournament, but because of COVID, we stopped. But a major emphasis of our team will be to bring back a national under 23 team who will be training throughout the year, given the fact that they may have school and, and such. We will, we will we structure the program in such a way that it's continuous, specialist coaches assigned to the team, and also these. This team will go on tour every year as part of their development. Touring is very crucial to the development of young cricketers. That's why we have 18 tours and so on. So we will bring back that on the 23 team to bridge that gap between the on the 19s, the national senior team, and by providing these specialist training and so on, mentally, physically, in every aspect of the game, we expect that we will produce them better cricketers. Yeah, we're talking a lot about the cricketers and you mentioned training and so on. I was also reading your mandate where you spoke about development from a coach's perspective and even the officials as well. What is in place? Because obviously cricket, in terms of <laughs> improving cricket, it's in all facets. So coaching, umpiring and so on, the managerial side of things. Talk to me about those facets because I noticed you have spoken a lot about the cricketers. But what about the other aspects of the game? Right. So part of our plan, according to the manifesto, is to engage the zones, especially to start off with, and the management of clubs into management training programs to, operate, to, to provide assistance to them so that the managers, the, the, the zonal officials, even the TTCB officials are better trained in management and managerial skills so that their management ability will be better and therefore they'll be able to better run the zones. In addition to that, we, we look at the coaches Yes, we have level one, level two, and level three coaches. We presently have a level three coach, um, coaches on that some of our nationals are in. But we think that in the last couple of years, the numbers have dropped in terms of how many coaches we have produced. And more importantly, keeping the coaches when we, when we coach them, we, we lose a lot. And I think it's because we don't have enhancement program where we engage the coaches continuously to enhance what they know by up-to-date and modern technology and getting them now more into specialist, specialized and specialist areas of coaching so that we have better coaches all around for all our national teams and even for clubs and schools and so on. Yeah, so is that one of the newspapers recently described your, your, your bid for the presidency as a, a brazen challenge to oppose veteran Basarat. 
Um, the, the narrative coming from the media in TNT, even constant reports I'm seeing about the central zone, south zone, southeast, east, northeast, Tobago Cricket Association, all uh, supporting Basarat. Um, the narrative coming across is, is that you're wasting your time. Oh, nice. Um, the fact of the matter is that we only have 49 voters. And how do you get 25 of that 49 to come your way? It means what we have been doing, we have not been much in the, in the media. We have been one-on-one -on -one with persons, meeting, treating, speaking to them, answering their questions, selling our plan. And we believe that if you look at the manifesto, it's very comprehensive. It has been very well received. Every single person that we have spoken to have praised the manifesto. They are very happy with it. Every day, everything in there is what they have been asking for in Trinidad and Tobago cricket. Mm -hmm. And it's up to the, the 49 voters now to decide that this is a vote to take Trinidad and Tobago cricket forward. This is a vote for a new vision, a new plan. This is a vote to move us out of stagnation that we are in and take us at a higher level in all aspects of cricket in Trinidad and Tobago. And therefore, while some may feel that they are reading newspaper reports, newspaper reports on 43 MSA can be very misleading, as you saw with one, where, where one, one association yes. came forward and said they were wrongfully quoted mm -hmm. and had to be withdrawn. Yes. And I think, honestly, that all those media releases was done, were done by one person, mm and sent to the media, and it does not reflect the feeling of the zones. It reflects the feeling of one or two persons in the zone. Yeah, so uh, in 10 seconds, in 10 yeah, seconds. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I think the, the audio is going bad. I'm, I'm hoping I can get an answer to this before we wrap because we're, we're at the end of the segment, so is that. But um, in, in 10 seconds, how confident are you on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, that you'll unseat Basarat? 10. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 that come Saturday. We will have taken that. We will have had 25 persons who yes. have the, the will and the willpower. Yes. And the, the, the fight to decide that we are going to change cricket. That 12 years is enough. And if after 12 years you say yeah. you have unfinished business, something is wrong, we should right. have had a foundation, yes. a structure. Yes. And at this moment, we should be putting in the lawn and yes. decorations. We don't have that in Trinidad and Tobago cricket. So I think there are 25 yes. people out there, 24 yes. plus myself, yes. who see it that way and are going to come out Saturday <laughs> and ensure so, that we have a new executive. 25, so, you're living so, on the edge. Suresh, Suresh, <laughs> Mahabir, you've, you've done well in this interview and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. And pleasant good night to well, you well, and the viewers. Well, okay, so that's Suresh Mahabir who will be challenging Asim Basarat, president of the, for presidency of the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board in the elections coming up this weekend. We go to break. Uh, a bit more still to come on the Sports My Zone.